Good evening, everybody. Here we are, All Season Adventures. What we've got planned for you guys today? Well, uh, like you guys can probably see from the thumbnail, uh, we're taking a beaster truck out camping. It's been a long, long time. I can't remember how long. And uh, I die. if you guys watched last week's vid, you guys know I have it up for sale. So try to get one last camping trip before uh, she's sold and gone. And see, there she is, all parked beside the garage. And what else we got? Well, right now, just so you guys know, the battery in here is dead as a doorknob. Uh, it's got no juice at all left in her. So I got my Noco GB40 here. Plan is to start her up, show you guys how well this guy works. And then I got my bigger boy GB70 in case the morning this guy doesn't start the truck. So we're not gonna start it many, many times. And then we got some uh, cheese dog for you guys, of course. Have a nice fire where we go camping. And I wanna discuss my opinion on adventure bikes, cause uh, from the way they're selling them, not everyone has the same definition as I do as an adventure bike. So anyhow, let's get rolling. Let's go out of fire and let's chit chat. So see you guys in a bit. Actually, we gotta start the truck first. So let, let me show you guys that. Okay, in case you never use, okay, so you guys know, I am not sponsored by these guys. I bought my own Nocos. I got two. I spent the money. They're not cheap, but hey, if Noco wants to give me one, I'll I'll take one. If you're out there, I'll, I'll do more tests. But anyhow, yeah, this is the GB40. Not a great big guy, but you know what? He does pack quite a bit of punch for the size. And if you never use these guys, just put your red pinchers on your red cable. Put your black pinchers on your your black cable. Push your little power button on, and then you got this little exclamation point. He's your little boost. And that's it. Time to go turn the ignition, and let me know if she starts. Took her a few tries to turn around, but you know what? Got the job done, so hey, uh, I, I love those units in my personal opinion. So if you use them, comment down in the typewriter section down below. But anyhow, time to get rolling, find our can spot. Cheers. Yeah, that was fun. For some reason she died. Let's go boost her and back up to our parking spot. Okay, as per normal all season adventures, you know we need to have ourselves a drink of shine. So uh, this time we got some uh, root beer moonshine from Still Fire Distilleries, uh, Nova Scotia. A little close up zoom on that. This one I've had one before and I can tell you she's a good one. So we'll quickly open her up. Oh, in case you can't tell, got our fire going in the background. It's been a while since we had a fire while we gone truck camping. There you go, that's some uh, root beer shine, pour a nice little gulp of that. Oh yeah, that's definitely some good stuff. But you know what we're going to make here even a little bit better? We got some Earps Sarsaparilla root beer. I know I've had this one with you guys before. 
course, change the twist top tops. There we go. Some good moonshine and some good root beer. Nothing but good in it. There you go. Oh yeah, that's pretty tasty, I tell ya. And uh, you guys know I always like to teach you guys some tips and tricks if I can. Got my cheese dog with me, but uh, not sure if you guys can tell or not, but there's not much kicking around for trees. Well, there are some branches I could use, but uh, another alternative, uh, you don't see much people using CB antennas like you used to back in the day. So I just pulled off my CB antenna and uh, yeah, that has a nice little stick that should be able to poke right into our cheese dog pretty darn good. There you go. So you can carry a CB antenna in your truck or CB in your truck. You got some emergency comms and emergency cheese dog cooking utensils. So anyhow, uh, time for a quick little cheese dog cooking montage. And then I'll get to uh, a little bit of adventure bike discussion with you guys. So uh, a little bit of uh, that montage and get to chatting. Okay, can tell we got all the fixings on here ketchup, mustard, relish. Time to give this uh, bad boy a taste test. All season does it again. Another perfectly cooked cheese dog. So, uh, oh, a couple more bites here. Get back to you guys and we'll start, talk, start talking adventure bikes here. Okay, so adventure bikes. When people mainly think of adventure bikes, they primarily think of uh, something like a BMW GS1250 or a uh, Triumph Tiger, uh, Ducati, or uh, Ducati's got one too, the Mossy Strata, I think, yeah. There's a picture there. Uh, what else is there? I'm trying not to forget them. Uh, uh, KTM, they got their big 900 whatever adventure. They got some bigger ones, I believe. Uh, and then you have what I'm interested in right now is what they call a light adventure bike, such as uh, such as your uh, KLX 350, uh, your CRF 300, uh, KLX 300, my bad, uh, CRF 300, uh, DRZ 400, WR 250. Oh, I think I saw an ambulance go by. All right. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I kind of. I'm a bit offended by people calling those light adventure bikes because in my mind an adventure bike uh, is a bike that got to get you as far away from civilization on the deepest adventures as possible. And uh, those big uh, big adventure bikes like I mentioned earlier, they can get some of the early places. Like I know some people are going to tell me when I say they can't get to the same place that the little bike can. Uh, I know uh, I, I, I got some Facebook friends, uh, Dustin and Kate. They got some big BMWs and the stuff they can do on those bikes, I probably can't even do on a tiny little light adventure bike. But for the majority of people, the smaller bike is easier to handle and you can get deeper in the woods. Uh, so that's why, big reason I want to sell this Beaster truck here. Let me know your opinion on uh, adventure bikes and the topic. But in my personal opinion, these light adventure bikes, they are true adventure bikes. They're not the most comfortable on the highway, that's for sure. The wind is going to blow you around. But uh, in my opinion, the, the adventure is not on the highway. The adventure starts once you hit the trail. Uh, I agree, those big adventure bikes, they are a lot better on the highway to get you to where you want to get to that trail. If you want to get to that uh, trail across the country. Yes, the big adventure bike is going to be a lot more comfortable to get there. But uh, once you get to that spot, uh, that light adventure bike, so they say, in my personal opinion, becomes the true adventure bike. So that's why uh, 
Currently, I have the, the KLR. You guys have seen it a lot in my video. Lots of amazing adventures with that bike I've had. Uh, it's That one is kind of in the middle. It's like they like to say, it's the jack of all trade. It's uh, it, it does everything, but it's good at nothing. <laughs> While you're, in my opinion, those big adventure bikes, they're good on the street, but not so good on the, on the gravel. And then the light adventure bikes, they're amazing on the gravel, but not so good on the pave. Like they, they, everybody keeps looking for that unicorn bike, which doesn't exist. So, but for what I want to do, uh, I'm looking for that light adventure bike and I keep going back and forth between my, my three preferences are the KLX 300, CRF 300 and the DRZ 400. So uh, right now I'm kind of leaning towards the Kawasaki. I guess it's got amazing suspension. Uh, slightly underpowered compared to this Honda, but uh, you know what? A few little mods, and we'll get right up there and surpass them. So, uh, but anyhow, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for this summer. This summer, I want to do a nice uh, uh, adventure ride again on a bike, and I'm hoping to do it on a new bike. Uh, they call them light adventure bikes, but in my opinion, the true adventure bike. So, anyhow, yeah, uh, once my fire dies, I'm probably just going to chill in the back of the truck. Chit chat a little bit with you guys more there, and I'll be watching some reviews. So hold on a second, I'll get right back to you guys once we're in the back. Cheers. <laughs> I think I should have did a yoga a week before coming camping in this rig. It's not quite the same as uh, the old time machine. But you know what? I did lots of camping trips in this rig and it definitely brings me back and a little bit nostalgic and it's kind of cool to have uh, one last little camping trip in this here old rig. But uh, anyhow, uh, I'm going to get my tablet out, watch a little bit of more bike reviews. I'll get back to you guys in the morning. Stay tuned. Cheers. It's on. <clears throat> okay. This ain't where we started off last night. You guys can tell. We're home. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go get warmed up a bit. And then I got a little story for you guys. Hold on a second. Cheers. Okay, as I am in the garage uh, finding some spare Ranger parts and touching up the video that you guys might be watching right now, I really didn't make a conclusion yet. So, anyhow, time for my conclusion to wrap this up. Uh, why did I wake up in uh, the driveway? Well, okay, where I was parked, it just so happened that there was a guy who had a building not too far from there. No tracks had passed there in a while, but anyhow, the night that I parked there is the night that he shows up. Super friendly guy, uh, asked me if I could move, I said no problem, gotta boost my truck, so get the booster. Uh, this time I get my big boy right out, right out of the way, my GB70. Unfortunately he doesn't just start the truck, so this time I need to hook a, the GB40, so two boosters on the truck. Uh, so yeah, we, but we got the truck started, okay, go and park next to the cul-de-sac at the end where I did a donut installed out. Thinking I should be fine there. Sure enough, but he comes back to me with my camping light, which I forgot there. And he says, uh, yeah, you might want to move in case that the plow truck, tr plow truck passes by. Yeah, probably has a good idea. So anyhow, get my boosters on there. Luckily, start one more time. So then I decided not to push my luck and just drive straight home and camp home. That's that story. And how did I enjoy camping in the back of Beaster Truck? Well, like that, you do need a little bit more flexibility in these winter months. But hey, in the summer, springtime, it works awesome. It forces you to spend more time outside, enjoy Mother Nature. So have fire, enjoy it. And then when it's time to go to bed, you just crawl in there and go to bed. So anyhow, hopefully next owner can enjoy it as much as I have. Because, you know, it's put lots of smiles on my, my face. And I know it puts a smile on your guys' faces. I guess that wraps it up for this week's episode. So until next time, remember to live, everybody. And cheers.